Welcome to Dying for Canvas. And today I'll be going over the different items I use while creating art and giving my recommendations. First off, we will start off with this easel. I suggest getting a nice stable easel like this one. Other, you can buy really cheap easels that are tripods, but those fall down and I've had several fall down as I was working and they're really flimsy so this one's a nice sturdy wood uh, it, you can adjust it to different heights and it has this nice shelf down here to keep all your stuff it's on wheels and on top of it it's got this nice uh, base now it does take up a lot of floor space, but uh, it's worth having if you have a dedicated studio. I've even set this up at the corner of an old room of mine, and it worked just fine. So The other item I suggest getting is something like this. This was actually free. It's a glass magazine end table that somebody was parting with. So I suggest glass because it's easy to clean. If you get paint on it, you could just scrape it right off. Uh, if you get terpenoid on it, it won't eat through it. So definitely get something like that. You could actually use this as a palette if you really wanted to and save you some time and just scrape off the paint that you're done with. Um, and the next item I suggest getting especially if you have bad lighting like I do is this LED light now this LED light has a tendency to turn on and off on its own for some reason or on and stay on I got this off of Amazon and it comes with a nice remote and you can also do color change it, uh, brightness. So even if you're not using it for art, you can set some mood light in. It also changes different colors, and we'll see using our painting how light can actually affect color. If you're going to do that, I would suggest getting a strip and uh, turning it off. So, now we'll go into this big box of art supplies and why I suggest uh, the items I do that I use. Okay. Alright, so welcome back and so we just went through the tour of my studio like I said I recommend a sturdy easel I believe that easel is about $300 uh, from Jerry's Artorama I am not sponsored by Jerry's Artorama in any way I think that light was 25 of Amazon uh, and I'm not sponsored by Amazon all these are my own personal thoughts my own reviews uh, a, a starting point for you uh, again, I've accumulated all of this stuff over like 20 years. So, and, but I've gone through a lot of art stuff, and so uh, these are just my recommendations, especially starting out. I don't try to say you need to buy $700 worth of product uh, starting out. Get what you can. Um, if you if you're starting out with painting or anything like that, start at the student level and you work your way up. You don't need the professional level. You need to learn your tool set first, and then and gain that skill, understand your tools, and then go from there. Uh, so the first thing, and I'm sorry I don't have a picture of it, but you've seen me use stretch canvases. I use linen, 
and I like linen better than duck canvas, but duck canvas is cheap, uh, especially with stretch. But if you're just learning out, and you've seen a lot of artists use it on, especially painting uh, channels use it, is what is called uh, basically it's, it's a canvas board. Now you could buy a, a large amount of those canvas boards for relatively cheap. Uh, those are great for studies, but I would not recommend them for final pieces. So if you're just doing like a facial study, uh, lighting studies, uh, something like that, that's great. Something that you don't want to hang up as a permanent thing. And they usually come in, uh, I think standard size is a size of a piece of paper, so it's 8 by 11, 8.5 by 11, and then it goes up from there. But they're usually never that big. Um, now, canvas. You can get really small circular canvas all the way up to massive amounts and you can stretch your own or uh, but within the art community art's not taken seriously if it's not on stretch canvas so the first item I suggest getting is clear gesso so you could buy gesso in different colors. You could buy it in white. I think they have a black gesso. Uh, but clear gesso works in two different ways. You can draw on your piece of paper and then cover this, uh, cover that drawing in gesso, which creates a barrier from water seeping into the paper below. So uh, it creates almost as a, like a laminate effect. Um, and then uh, when you're done with your piece, uh, you can actually put it over the finished piece and create another barrier of for the painting and uh, and I also suggest putting it on the back of canvases, the back of your canvas, so water doesn't seep into the canvas and create molding. So this does come uh, go on as a white, but it does clear it does dry it goes on wet it goes on it goes on as white when it's wet but cl uh, dry is clear so I suggest getting a big container like this uh, it's more cost efficient and I want to say these is this may be $30 uh, and that's a ballpark I haven't bought gesso in a while so uh, I suggest getting a high quality gesso. I would not use gesso though if you do watercolors or gouache because I learned this the hard way. I put this on top of the, the gouache one time as a protector and it ruined my entire painting and I had to redo it. So nothing water based should be, uh, you shouldn't apply uh, just so on the top of your completed product uh, if it's water based. Right. I also just suggest get a uh, like a mu an old muffin tin or something so you could just put your gesso uh, into it uh, and we just had this one actually this was going out to the garbage and I thought hey I could repurpose it for art stuff, uh, if you use a lot of uh, like paints, uh, like one particular color of paint, you could also put it in one of these, and it keeps it separate from uh, contamination. So uh, it's just an old rusty old muffin tin. When it comes to Palettes. I suggest getting a uh, disposable palette. These are relatively cheap, uh, and this one is from Soho, which is a Jerry's Artorama brand. Uh, this is a nine by twelve. It's great for just paints in general. It's gray toned, and it has forty. It has forty coated sheets in it, and I. So the great thing about this, I know there's always the imagery of 
uh, artist with uh, wood palettes or stuff like that but uh, these are great just for uh, work flow uh, palettes get gross after a while uh, you want to switch over to another color and you have paints all over the place on your palette instead of cleaning you just rip it off throw it away these this particular uh, palette uh, is a thicker paper and has a nice coating I like the gray because uh, the color stands out more um, this is a Canson uh, brand uh, paper palette it is um, 40 sheets, 9 by 12. Uh, at the time I bought it, it was 475, and but they're thin and almost filmy, and I'm just not a huge fan of these. I want something a little bit thicker, uh, but and I think this one may even five, but you're also getting bigger, thicker product. I'm not, again, price points are not, I don't remember the price points, so. Those were palettes. Uh, you could also use glass, uh, like I suggested uh, when I was in the studio, uh, like a glass top. Uh, you can literally scrape your paint as they dry off, uh, and then that's resistant, so that's a economical way of having a palette that uh, you could constantly use and you don't have to spend extra money I um, also suggest getting a apron I got this uh, this was a Christmas present at Walmart it's just a, a butchers or baker's apron uh, just can a thick canvas um, and this will save your clothes from paint uh, getting splattered on it. I would su still suggest wearing clothes that you're not going to wear out in public or you know like laundry day clothes or something like that. Uh, just um, something you really don't care about. Uh, you know that that holy t-shirt that you have in the back of your closet or uh, something like that. And then uh, get yourself a bunch of like towels. Now this is an old uh, tea towel that my mom was throwing out that I thought that I could reuse. It was just stained and stuff like that. Uh, I also use, uh, you know, ratted uh, washcloths and stuff like that. Uh, so get yourself some rags to clean off your paints. And, so. and then so I have three different types of uh, terpenoid containers or brush clean cleanser containers and so this is a reaches, reach, recent purchase that I got it was about $37 um, it's I'm pretty sure it says it's stainless steel it's the Da Vinci brand from Jerry's Artorama uh, and it is a high quality stainless steel will hold up to uh, 50 milligrams totally leak proof allowing you to store solvents without spills uh, handle makes it ca uh, carrying Carrying carefree and easy. So, I bought it just for the handle. No. Uh, so, let's pop this open and see what we've got. So, it's got these three clips. It's got a nice bell um, design so it doesn't tip. And inside, inside you have a gasket and you have your removable uh, brush holder and that's what you want uh, so and you'll see why I suggest that you know, so you can properly clean it um, and it just 
holds in there, you just seal it. So, this is my original one. This is an economic version. And as you can see, I've had this for years. As you can see, it's pretty disgusting. Uh, it's hard to clean. Uh, the top is plastic, and as you can see, it's, uh, it, it's over time it has worn down and sort of divoted. Um, and the coil inside of it gets smashed down so you don't get a thorough cleaning of your brush. And then the coil is, you can't, rem uh, can't remove the coil. So there's always going to be sediment underneath of it, and there's going to be sediment on the sides. It's just really difficult to clean, but I think this is like $14. So if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of cash, uh, get this. This is a silicone jar. Uh, you don't want to use plastic styrofoam, any of those because terpenoid will eat right through it and you have a huge mess. Mm -hmm. But I suggest getting something where you can clean your brushes too. So like a coil or something like that. And then this was a mess. Uh, so always be careful of what you order on Amazon and make sure you look at the sizes. But I had a bigger one in college and I'm not a big fan of these uh, this type of container because it is not size wise but because of the straight up design I've actually had these tip over they're you know somebody's bumped into it, it's tipped over uh, similar design to the Da Vinci one uh, gasket inside and then removable this would be good for uh, like when I work in gouache or something like that, it would be something I could sit on my table that's not too massive. But you definitely want to have, uh, you don't want to use one container for everything. Uh, you don't want to cross contaminate your terpenoid with water and use that when you're working in a different product. So you have to have dedicated uh, containers for dedicated things. Um, for water too, um, just random storage. Uh, you could also use these Giletto containers uh, if you like this Giletto brand. It's the Culinary Tours brand, and they're they all come in these plastic containers. They're pretty decent plastic containers, and I keep my erasers and stuff in there. And I also uh, in my second video I will um, go through my erasers and uh, my pencils and stuff like that so that but that's the second video this is about painting so the solvent you want to use in my opinion is odorless terpenoid uh, this is a turpentine synthetic and turpentine is actually poisonous and um, there's been some issues, so they've gone to a synthetic. You can't really find turpentine anymore, and when I started, you used turpentine. Um, but you want to use the odorless because uh, the odor does overtake you after a while, and it'll just stink up your, your house. I don't care how much ventilation you had, you have. It's You just uh, go with odorless terpenoid. Uh, I've used mineral spirits. I don't think it cleans as well as terpenoid does. And you can get these in various sizes for different price points. So. And yes, I know it's in plastic. I think it's it's a you know a chemical plastic. So. The paint brushes I prefer to use are Mongoose hair paint brushes. Now these are expensive paintbrush, um, and but they're considered some of the Mongoose hair is considered some of the best. 
they have synthetic and they have boar hair. I start off in boar hair. Uh, you want, in my opinion, you want natural hairs because it holds the paints a lot better than the synthetic hair. Uh, but if you have issues with using animal hair, then you can use a synthetic. But you have to remember also when you use paint brushes, you have to be dedicated to that one a medium. So if you use oil paints, you can't you if you use your brushes for oil paints, you can't use them for acrylics. It damages the uh, it damages the the bristles, and you're gonna have to repair them. So. One way that you can uh, keep your used brushes separate is this uh, brush stand, and as you can see, it is sectioned off. Now, this one is missing a leg. They do come in three legs. This one's just missing one because I've had it for years, and I lost it somewhere, and it moved. So. Um, this way, if you're done with a, a brush for a while, instead of just having it on your tabletop and getting knocked off on the floor, you have this, and it'll dry it. You can, you know, keep it after you wash it, and yeah. So I think these are ten or so dollars. Uh, one of my preferred, so in between actual physical washings and um, when you're just in the studio on, in time flow mode, you can, I prefer these Soho brand studio wipes. Uh, they're pre-moistened wipes that are 6.3 by 8 inches. There's 40 wipes in them. They're relatively cheap. Uh, they're just your traditional uh, like wipes and this these are great for just getting the color off of it after it builds up but you don't want to take it and completely clean it and so when I first started out painting a lot of people said well, just use turpentine to thin out your paints. Well, through years of doing that and research, I found out that it, that is not good for the paints because it actually breaks the bonds, which can cause yellowing to the canvas and just aging and stuff like that. And you just want to avoid that as much as possible. So I use this artistic medium or linseed oil. You can, if you can find linseed oil, uh, so linseed oil or this and the point of this is to improve flow and a wetting of oil colors um, and enriching dull patches it dries slowly to a non-yellowing flexible film it has linseed stand oil petroleum distillate in it and it is combustible but this is a good investment if you want to thin out your paints instead of using turpenoid. And I highly suggest that. And if you, so instead of cross contaminating uh, this container, I use this old uh, mustard crock. And now uh, I got the mustard crock full of mustard at Aldi's and I ate the mustard and kept the crock because it's a nice thick crock with a good lid on it and that's what I put my artist medium in and so it doesn't contaminate the overall jar and, it's, and I just put a little bit in there not much and that's what I that's my dip uh, dipping for my brushes uh, I used to actually use 
Now you could use plastic containers like this. I did use this at one time. This is full of linseed oil. I suggest using something that can be cleaned like that compared to a container like this because it does just get disgusting over time. And it's hard to get out of the nooks and crannies and this is going to be thrown away. So, But I just wanted to show you all that. Now, if you have brushes that you don't are currently not using, uh, you want to store them upright. You don't want to put them down because they'll destroy the integrity of the brush. So, and this is an actually an old. Uh, this was like a promotional container for some port, and I drank the port, and I was like, I really like this uh, metal container. And that's why I keep my brushes in. Also, use uh, if you like want to do stars and stuff. Instead of you know, point uh, pinpointing the stars, uh, or you could just use them as a splatter effect. Is an old toothbrush. Now, I suggest a firm brush compared to a soft brush, but uh, you can use an old toothbrush. And you load it with paint, and you just use your finger and just do that and it gives a nice little splatter effect. Uh, some other things. So I use a lot of titanium white in my uh, in painting because traditionally you're not supposed to just use white straight out of the tube. Uh, so you mix it with another color and usually one of the colors you mix it with is obviously white so uh, I suggest buying a tub of titanium oil white uh, this is the Soho brand I think this was about forty dollars it's sealed like a uh, like a, in just a paint container you get at Lowe's or whatever so you have to pry it open uh, and I break that down into one of these so it's easier to manipulate and doesn't cross contaminate into the tub itself. And then I will just use a plastic uh, pellet knife to get it out of this container. So I've always had a issue with tubes uh, and never getting a way out, uh, getting all the, the paint out of the tube. So my wife came up with a system to to make my workflow a little bit easier. And so what she did is use these plastic containers that you get at Walmart and wrote down the number, the brand, and what color they are into the plastic tube and then that way the color is easier accessible easily and, uh, and you're not putting a lot of tubes to waste or in some cases the lid sealing up and you can't open it so and she has what is called a key and she tried to squeeze all these out but I recently purchased this key to get all the tubes out, uh, the paint out of the tubes off of Amazon and you just put your, you like you'll squeeze some of it out into this container, into the, in, into these plastic tanners and then put your tube and rotate it and get the rest of it out. So, and that's, I think that was like 10 or 15 but this will save especially like some colors like this yellow this yellow I really didn't realize how little I had so I just bought some more yellow but it also helps you with judging how much paints you still have because it's hard to do that in the tubes and finally after your painting is dry, 
and uh, you've let it sit for six to uh, a year because all, each layer has to dry on its own. I like to apply a artistic gouache varnish to it. Number one, it only it protects it, and also gives it a nice, almost like candy coated sheen, and so and it protects it from a, uh, from yellowing and. Also, just gives it a nice, nice finished look, and really pops some of those colors out. The only issue I really have with the gloss is that it's um, like the sun will bounce off of it if it, you know, hits it wrong, and uh, you create a glare effect like you, like on TV or something like that. So very similar. But other than that, um, I like the gloss compared to like a matted finish or a semi gloss. Uh, because I use a lot of vibrant colors uh, and I mean like the the varnish is a little bit more expensive and so this does not bloom I suggest not getting a blooming uh, varnish unless that's the effect and from my understanding what blooming is and I've been having a hard time trying to figure out what blooming is but basically mm -hmm. over time a film will create and you know like in a corner or something like that and then it will sort of spread out and that's what they call blooming so uh, unless you want that effect I suggest getting a non blooming uh, varnish and even here it says 6 to 12 months and this is removable if you need to remove it. Also do not use this as a medium. This is its, you know, you, this is your first, the final final piece before you hang it on the wall. So. Alright, that concludes uh, the painting part. The second part we'll just go over uh, random uh, art stuff that I have that uh, you can get for um, yourself and just like sitting at your chair and drawing or whatever so all of the all, most of my art stuff comes from Jerry's uh, to me they are a Jerry's Artorama they are a, a real relatively good priced uh, art store compared to other ones I've been to or online retailers and they're based out of North Carolina. They do have physical stores. Uh, if you preferred that, you know, I just recently ordered. I had no issues with the shipping itself, and uh, all the products were well packaged. So I was quite happy because I never ordered from there. I've always gone to the physical store. Uh, now I would suggest buying canvas in the physical store compared to ordering it online. Um, and having shipped directly to your door. That's just me. I don't know what their process is for that. Uh, I just, I'm always a little leery when it comes to canvases. Um, so that concludes that I'm not sponsored by Jerry's Artorama in any way or any other sponsors, but I do suggest buying your art supplies from Art, uh, art stores compared to Amazon because at least with the art stores you can ask questions, you can email Jerry's, they have I think a lot of 24-7 uh, person on there, customer service person, if you have any questions and they have everything from uh, you know young kids stuff all the way up to professional grade stuff from, with different price points uh, if you're a student, I suggest using uh, the in-house brand called Soho. Um, their their stuff is pretty comparable to any of the other competitors that they have. Uh, I have colored pencils from them. I've used their paints and a lot of my paintings and stuff like that. So, as a student grade paint, they are really reasonable. Um, and that way you can also, and they also have kits, they have like oil painting kits, and then they have acrylic kits, and they actually have their own uh, sort of like 
paint series kits. It, it, Jerry's is a pretty good company, and I like that Soho brand. Unfortunately, I'm sort of outgrowing uh, their their brand, so uh, I have to go in a different direction with my colors. But uh, so in the next video, we'll be going over painting supply. I mean, uh, drawing supplies and other little knick-knacky art stuff. See you then.